right, everybody. Welcome back to Sinker, Drinker, Thinker. We're three guys. We pour some pours. We make some cocktails. And uh, we put them in a ridiculous redank- ranking system. Um, notice the Sinker, Drinker, Thinker. We tell you how we really feel. Um, known for being honest, guys. Welcome to Elevating Your Home Bar Week, um, where two people who are just assholes and then Troy the Body of Glotti teach you about <laughs> elevating your home bars. <laughs> ah, that was all right. uh, my name is Anthony Longano. I am one of those said assholes. I am a, a liquor and alcohol connoisseur. Liquor and alcohol are two different things. Um, and I am your host. I'm joined here by my two very best friends in the world sometimes. Um, one of them is a world-renowned master sommelier, wine professional, and um, he has renovated the worst bar in America into the best bar in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, <laughs> Is that a downgrade or an upgrade? The co-owner and future manager of all bars, but currently, but currently of Connor's Rooftop here in Fort the Fuck Wayne, Indiana. Troy the Body Viglotti. Everybody, round of applause for the body, everybody. Yep, give it up. Yep. And then uh, there's Matt McKibble, who we learned is a pretty decent house guest. Twice this week, actually. House guest? House, house guest? Oh, house yeah. host? House oh, host? Oh. Yeah, I'm a house guest and a house host. One time, house guest. One. He's time. a pretty good fucking host, and uh, he had us to his house twice this week. One time, we actually decided to ask him to make us some drinks. Um, the whole point of that episode, which is the the one that came out on Monday, um, was for Matt to make drinks like he would for anyone at home, but he didn't do that. He used techniques that he learned over filming 100 episodes with me and Troy the Body of Glotti, and he didn't really leave us much content for today. But which is a compliment. Oh, thanks. He was nervous. He was sweating I out of his nervous, little tits. I was nervous. I was awkward. And I, for this, I'm not sorry. Because you know what? This is real life. And I don't care. There's still going to be plenty of content. There's still oh, going to be plenty. Oh, yeah. I messed up a lot of things. <laughs> plenty, plenty to talk about. And we purposely planned that episode where Troy would get a shaken whiskey cocktail and I would get a stir whiskey cocktail. Um, Matt, what cocktails did you make me and Troy the Body of Uh Troy wanted a whiskey sour, which I made for the first time. And I think it turned out okay. And then I made uh, Anthony a cocktail called In Cold Blood, which is an equal parts cocktail with rye whiskey. Very popular in the Portland, Maine scene from what I've heard. That's what I heard. I think yeah. it was in a book once, something like that. But yeah. I found it on the internet, and I made it, uh, and uh, I think it was actually pretty all right. Yeah, it could have been better. So yeah. um, first thing we're going to talk about this week, um, before, you know, and the goal today is for our, us to dive in, me and the body to dive in to those cocktails Matt made, and maybe tell them how we would make them or elevate them or prepare for coming over and making large portions of them for larger groups of people, which is something that me and Troy do often. Um, he does it professionally. I do it because I uh, just like to get people drunk. It's like one of my favorite pastimes. And in 100 more episodes, maybe we'll do this again and see how I see how I fare. Yeah, you fared fine. <laughs> you were a fair lady. Um, a fair cocktail. Yeah, a fair cock lady. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah, anyway. Oh, no, 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 no bolognese sandwiches for you. A um, couple things I want to address. You used a couple pieces of barware that I didn't necessarily want you to use. Oh. Um, but, this, you know, well, the normal people at home, you know, they'll buy, like, they'll get a gift or they'll go to Target and they'll spend $20 on the all-in-one cocktail kit. And it's like a wooden rack with a shaker that has one of those stupid fucking lids on it. I, I like would have used those, but I swore those off. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I you know, and any home I go to, I know that I'm going to drink mold if it has one of those shakers. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the times people don't have a stirring vessel or, or a mixing glass. They usually just pour it in a pint glass or they mix it in the glass, which That's Matt did. Um I, I do think that a proper mixing glass is key, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today, too. Uh, maybe Troy can give us some insight on that, and since he's a little bit more of a professional. I just know that it tastes better and helps the loop, but we'll get there. Um, Matt did use a proper bar spoon. That's because it was provided for him. Um, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I was going to no use a tablespoon. Reason. Yeah, uh, most people just shake everything. We're going to we're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when it's proper to shake, when it's proper not to. Um, but a couple key things, you know, um, I think first, Troy, what is the most important piece of barware? Is there a right answer? I think so, but I'm curious <laughs> to see what yours is. <laughs> uh, goodness. Pro- most important piece of barware. Um, I would say maybe the glass. That you're serving in? Yeah. Interesting. Maybe. Well, I would say a jigger is probably the most important piece of barware. That is important. Measuring accuracy. Yeah. If, that is important. If you don't consistently measure properly and to the right proportions, um, I don't really know if it matters how you present it. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Right? You're not wrong. Okay. So a jigger is very important. 
It is indeed very important. Yeah. yeah. Um, and those are those little weird measuring things. And in the U.S., the proper, you know, we use ounces over in the U.K. They use milliliters. Um, so fuck us all. We just can't all agree. World peace, everybody, please. Um, standards. Please. We're the only ones who. Oh, no, we're terrible. Here. Yeah. Yeah, terrible. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Obama. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Jigger will have one ounce on one end and two ounces on the other. Um, most sometimes, dr- yeah. Most drinks are measured in quarter ounces. So, you know, I, I, if it's not a quarter ounce or more, it's a bar spoon, technically. I, I mean, the, or you know, dash, or, or dash, splash, or spit. Um, Troy spits in his drinks a lot. Sure, that's why it tastes good. Yeah, especially yeah. when someone asks for a pappy old fashioned, or, <laughs> or what was that? Uh, the golf double course o, double one. O seven. 007 or the the proc what's it oh, the <laughs> inf- the the transfusion the transfusion yeah, 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 that one yeah, yeah. yeah I was gonna say the proclamation for some reason I don't know why I thought you were gonna say proctologist uh, yeah, yeah I was getting there <laughs> oh wow I have some proctologist stories we can tell on here after a few anyway uh, <laughs> shaking tins not the ones with the the fucking dirty caps on them you get mold in them they're impossible to clean they're a mess the caps never come off especially yeah, they get stuck when it gets cold like the, it it oh, shrinks and it worst. just it's terrible. Um, just get a normal shaking tin. You can get them at uh, cocktailkingdom.com. Um, I mean, there's there, there's two things. You stick them together. You can get one of them and use a pint glass. Yep. You, you go to any American Legion in the country. That's how they shake all the drinks. Um, that leads me to another point. A mixing glass is probably something you should invest in. Um, you can't shake everything. Troy. Yeah? There's probably a rule of thumb of what drinks should be shaken and what drinks should not be shaken, correct? Yeah. What is that rule of thumb? Typical things with citrus and it need to be citrus? shaken, right? Oh, like, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like you shake, I shake everything, Anthony. What are you trying to say? <laughs> oh, God. I don't have any mixing glasses. <laughs> um, yes, yes, yes. Um, it's not hard and fast, but it is very much... Um, it's, it's very much uh, uh, implied, is the word I was drawing a blank on, as per usual. That uh, if it's got citrus juice, specifically lemon or lime, because they're so they're both so acidic that it's almost like you need the ice in the shaker um, to like act as an emulsifier, if you will, mm. to blend the citrus into the the beverage. So it's um, so it's not just like a separate component of just pure fucking raw acid. Sure. And generally speaking, you know, if you've got acid, you've got, you've got some sort of sweetness, some sort of sugar component to, to offset that too. But at the end of the day, it's all about balance. Um, you know, in a perfect world, the best of the best beverages that are shaken with citrus have the sugar and they also probably have a little bit of bitterness too. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the ones you do stir why are we stirring them in a, in a separate mixing glass and then straining them into said presentation glass over more ice? Well, you are stirring them to basically pre, pre-chill pre and pre-dilute. Mm. Um, and and you don't want to, I guess the, one of the terms you could use is like bruise the, the drink and overdo it by shaking delicate... Uh, like, like you know spirits mm. i think a lot of the boozier drinks are the ones that end up being stirred um like your your higher proof cocktails like a manhattan or an old fashioned or something like that 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 don't necessarily have the citrus to offset them um but you 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 want them to be chilled before they hit the glass that you pour them into but you also don't want like say you know your your glass is going to end up having ice it's going to be on the rocks and it's a stirred cocktail you want you want it to be not watered down ice yeah. in the drink because it's just gonna it's just gonna water down your drink. And when, when I make what I'm gonna make, um, we'll talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole idea there is to and there's like actually stirring techniques too based on what spirits you have in there, and usually it is higher proof stuff. Um, I, if something like especially for people who are maybe not using like the best quality ingredients and i think ingredients probably matter even more than the jigger but like if you've got something yeah. that's a little bit spicy or, or really hot and i'm not even talking about proof but just something that doesn't really taste good maybe like a really low quality um um pour of something that you're using like in an old-fashioned your, the base whiskey is something you know that you're clearly going to use for cocktails because it doesn't taste good there's actually like um 
something called a regal stir, and you can even do like a regal shake too. If you actually put a citrus peel in the bottom of your mixing glass or in the bottom of your shaker and shake or stir with said citrus peel in there, it actually cuts some of the harshness of the spirit, which is because the oils come out, um, which we're going to do in a variation of tonight too, um, specifically for what I'm going to make because I know my guests and I like after you make drinks for guests for a certain amount of times, you can kind of know what they do like and what they don't like. And I know for a fact that the drink I'm going to make, um, me and Troy are going to love, but Matt might find it a little bit harsh. So I'm going to do a regal stir on his. Oh, uh, okay. And, and we'll be able to compare. I'm a king, baby. Yeah. Um, other really important things, obviously, a strainer. Um, and then glassware, ice, peelers, all the normal stuff. Um, moral of the story is the first thing you can do to elevate your home bar game is to buy actual materials and don't cheap out them on them. Um, there's a separate step of elevation above that on the things you can get like bitter dashers, bar mats, all that kind of stuff, but smokers. Um, yeah. And I think that's, uh, don't buy good quality stuff. Don't just buy expensive stuff or like yeah. chintzy stuff. Right. I mean, yeah, it's correct. like, those shakers that have the recipes on them, you can turn like, oh, how do I make a margarita? Let me turn the shaker and I'll tell you, <laughs> tell you how to make it. Oh, God. Like there, you're like, oh, that's cute. Maybe I'll get that for Christmas. Yeah, that's here, something but, that like your mother-in-law buys for your stocking, yeah. and then like, you know, when you run out of glasses at a party, someone gets to drink their beer out of that. You know, yeah, um, yeah. and it's usually the body because he uses all the other glasses in my house. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, ice is a big part of technique. Um, we'll talk about that first, I think. Um, yeah. Troy, do you want to go first, or should I go first? I have no preference, my friend. Yeah. I mean, you're, like, we we can, you know, we know what we're making, and I know that your cocktail is definitely far more elevated than mine is well, going to be. Well, so. I just like to, you know, I'll start by saying I, I've never worked in the alcohol industry professionally. Um, I do think that making cocktails is a culinary art. I think there's a culinary aspect to it. And I think it's really easy to to elevate certain things at home that will impress people and taste really good and make people appreciate what you're doing. And it's a lot easier than people think. Um, whether that's infusions or making cool syrups or what, but there was a, a cocktail that I found online and we'll put it in the episode notes. We'll give whoever needs credit for this in the episode notes. I, I forget the guy's name. It's Andrew something. Um, I, I forgot what bar he's from, but I found it a few months ago, just scrolling. Someone was making and talking about it and I was just getting into Fernet, and it's called the bitter handshake. And um, it seems like super bougie to make, but it is such an elevated drink. And then the other day when when you made me that equal parts cocktail, which was um, sweet vermouth, rye whiskey, and uh, chinar. and chinar, which is uh, um, um, artichoke, artichoke amaro, um, part of, amari, part of the amaro family. Is it liqueur, yeah. or is it? It's an amaro. It's an amaro. Okay. Yeah. Um, I thought you know well that cocktail, the bitter the bitter handshake cocktail, is literally an equal parts cocktail of almost the same make but it's like just a little bit elevated in the sense where it's it's fernet which is an amaro that is not necessarily everyone's favorite at first i collect and love amaro and i hated fernet fernet until about three months ago um and i love it so proud of you yeah i love it um and like i this drink was invented because and maybe you can tell this that there's something called the bartender's handshake um, it's a kind of like a cat, like a, like a, just like, like a casual thing that bartenders do to other bartenders, um, where it's like, you know, uh, a shot or whatever at the end of someone's shift or like something like that that you have with it's a like, guest bartender. It, like or you acknowledge that they're yeah. also a bartender that are yeah. at your bars. So you want to like treat them. Right. Like exactly. Okay. Yep. So, um, I think that's how that Eminem got so incredibly popular. Yeah. That's Montenegro and Mezcal, yeah, which is fucking fantastic. Yeah. Um, I haven't said what that in a while. That felt good to say. But f- <laughs> fucking fantastic for all my humble fans out there um, who are soaking themselves. Merch coming soon. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot Matt doesn't like mezcal. Yeah, well, well I'll drink it. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, I don't like it, but I'll drink it. Um, yeah. But uh, I, Fernet's awesome. And I, I think the there's something called the Bitter hand, Handshake, which was started with Fernet, um, and then it evolved into a cocktail from this one bartender. Um, now now it makes so much more sense. Yep. Fernet is, is like, it's... Shooting for net across the the restaurant industry, it, it it was so massive around the time that I started coming up in 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 working in high end places like, and people in the industry were the only ones who liked it, yeah, and nobody else understood why, like yeah. you just had to be there. It was so weird, and it it it, it was such a fucking acquired taste. Like, is it? It's it's so abrasive. <laughs> yeah, 
like when you say like you had to have been there, it's like the hipster of all the girls. It really <laughs> was. It totally was, man. Yeah. yeah. Fernet, so, the hipster. So, so, and then this, um, and the, the purpose besides this one, the building the bitter handshake was supposed to almost be like an old fashioned kind of equal parts old fashioned. Oh, okay. Um, so there's actually a rye whiskey syrup in it. What is it? Like, so huh. it's an, it's a simple syrup made with rye whiskey and instead of water and sugar. Um, and so you just rye barely sugar? simmer it. If it starts to get to a boil, you'll turn it off. So it's just rye and sugar, equal parts, one cup wow. rye, one cup sugar. And it literally took me four minutes to make. It took longer to cool than it did to make. It's something you can easily make an hour and a half before guests are coming over and put, cool. in, put in a little dispenser. And then it's um, um, uh, a blood orange reduction, which also is extremely simple to make. It's You take two cups of blood oranges, fresh squeezed blood oranges, and tis the season. They're in season right now, or they're coming out of season. They're a winter orange, essentially. But um, And then you put them in a pot, and then if you got start with two cups, you take it off when it's a cup and a half. It just You let it simmer out, essentially. You let it boil out, and it creates this beautiful, lush kind of a little bit of a sweeter, bitter orange type of deal. Um, and it's equal parts. It's literally just the, um, the Fernet, um, the, uh, the rye whiskey syrup. I used, uh, the, the rabbit hole rye cause I fucking love it. And it's a, it's a good one. Um, and then I, I made blood orange reduction and then and I'm, I'm going to stir it and then, um, put it over a large cube with an orange, orange peel garnish. I'm actually going to use an orange peel in the glass for you. Oh boy. For a little regal stir. Okay. Kind of just kind of tame down the Fernet a little bit. Um, okay. for you, but like, I, you know, that is for me, if I'm going to elevate my home bar game, or if you want to take your next step there, I mean, and if you're good at cooking, first of all, don't make a drink with something you wouldn't eat. Um, and don't cook with something you wouldn't eat too type of thing. Like, sure. Right. So like, um, I don't know. And if you know how to cook, you know how to make cocktails. That's the way I think about it. You just got to focus that energy. Um, and creative stuff like that, I always want to try. And it was so quick and simple. Like I, I made both those syrups while I was changing a load of dishes last night. I really want to, uh, when you say you know how to cook, you know how to make cocktails, like, all right, next up, my air fried cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> um, Go make a cocktail. Now this, this, uh, <laughs> you, you uh, we'll talk about it when you make it too, but you stirring this, um, kind of goes against that rule of thumb we were just talking about with, with, uh, shaking well, citrus. But, it's a, but if it's a reduction though. It's a reduction. It does. Yeah. I mean, it is it fresh? Is it fresh that's, citrus? That's the, that's the shaking rule or is it? Oh, interesting. It's more, it's, it's more of a, it's more of a syrup now. It's pretty Thick and viscous, but there's no no sugar added, right? Nope. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just saying it's it's you know you're, you're the, the condition. You of are making said you are making a good point. You is, are making a good point. You know, it, it can change the entire game. Yeah, you are making a good point. I think the way that he, in, when I was reading about this cocktail, I, I remember it was more or less like, well, I want to make a larger equal parts old fashioned. So the the reduced blood orange is kind of like the orange in the bitters, and then I think some more of that bitter character probably comes from the fernet too. But then the rye whiskey syrup. <laughs> Um, is kind of like the sugar and the whiskey. I don't know. That's the way he was explaining it. Um, it's yeah. stirring over a large cube. So we're gonna give it a shot. It could. It could possibly fucking blow. It could. But yeah, I made it yet. I've not, I haven't even tried it. We're gonna try it on oh, here. But it's I'm, just like I'm thirsty. This is something I would do if I was having people coming over. I was like, you know what? This would be a good opportunity for me to try this and also try it on my guests. And I, I have a lot of bougie friends that don't necessarily know how to drink, but they appreciate liquor. Mm -hmm. And that's you know that's you know the way I would think about it. Cool. So I'm gonna make it. I'll do it. Okay. Cocktail break. Welcome back from cocktail break. All right, Anthony, what we got? Got a dirty ass jigger. <laughs> huh. Wonder who made drinks here last. Huh. Hey, that this is my house, not your house. A dirty ass jigger. <laughs> uh, we teleported back to my house. It's fine. It's alcohol. <laughs> um, yeah, super easy cocktail. I'm gonna make three at once, um, like I would if three people were at my house, um, and I was making three cocktails at once. One of them has special needs. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, and it's more or less just me being considerate of my guest. That's that's the way I think about it. It's like I know his flavor profile. That's what I'm going to do. So talking about elevated barware, Matt used this on la last episode, which kind of pissed me off. But a normal person who made a whiskey sour wouldn't even know what this is. This is a fine mesh strainer. And we're going to double strain through this. Um, just because of this blood orange reduction, it's very pulpy still. But like, I mean, just look how thick and viscous that is. Um, I haven't tried this yet, but this is four blood oranges and simmer and you boil it out. Um, I might start making this rye whiskey syrup just for food. Um, although I am like pre-diabetic now, apparently, so maybe not. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, I, that's I drink, some, I some unfortunate blood work, everybody. Um, but yeah, here's the way I would do this. So I would get all my tools, 
Got this mixing glass here. Um, and I'm going to think about how these drinks are going to be poured. I'm going to make mats first. And I'm, I'm going to think about a couple things that I know, right? So, first and foremost, it was very nice of Matt to use a large cube. If you want to impress your guests, get a, a clear large cube maker thing, tray. Um, or you can, like, get, like, man, I see all these videos. I want to do this so bad. Where you get, like, a... Um, the freezer? Dude, you get, like, a, like a, a cooler. Yeah. And you, like, cut the lid off of it. And I don't know. But I can put this stuff... I know I can put these in the glass really early in this process because they don't really melt that quick. And it's not really going to dilute. Um, that also means that I can stir Matt's drink less because it's going to sit in his glass first and it will get cooler. The problem with Matt's drink when he made it for me is that he was stirring in a glass with a large cube. Large cubes don't dilute, so there was no dilution in the drink. And, um, I mean, he probably stirred it long enough, but the drink wasn't cold. So we're going to stir it in this. We're going to stir it for a long time. We're going to stir it over large cubes, too. Um, which we can, I think we've talked about a million times on here, but I'm happy to do it again. But, um, yeah, let's make mats first. So what did I say I was going to do? I was going to put a, a peel in here. Yeah, so that's what I was going to ask you. Is, so is, is it you put this peel in the mixer when you're sh when you're mixing it, or do you do it afterwards? Yeah, when when you're mixing. Okay. So I'm just going to put this in here. Um, you don't necessarily have to muddle it down, but, like, the actual friction of it stirring in the glass releases oils from the peel, and then... Uh, Kind of tames down the drink a little bit. Do you do with uh, citrus of your choice, or is it usually always like an orange or something? Um, I think I, I would you can do it with orange and with lemon. Um, it's usually, yeah, probably citrus of your choice. Um, I'm gonna garnish this with an orange peel. So um, I chose orange. This looks delicious, man. How much of that? So this is a rye whiskey syrup, and typically the rule of thumb with with syrups is equal proportions, especially like a simple syrup, unless you're making it rich. Um, this is one cup of the rabbit hole rye and one cup. Of, um, of sugar, white sugar, and then um, if let it like start to simmer. The second it boils, as long as all the sugar's out of it, it's clear, take it off the heat. Um, it takes literally four minutes. So you don't think you're really evaporating much or any alcohol it out of there? It tastes pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I think that's the goal. Like once it starts boiling, yeah. you're, you're, you're taking off, you know, actual alcohol. I did one ounce of that. We're an equal parts cocktail. So one ounce of each. This is the... The blood orange reduction that I've explained 25 times. Sorry, um, I missed that. What is that? <laughs> is it oranges or is it blood oranges? Or it's blood. Blood! Look at that. Blood! Look at that. It's actual human blood from... Um, <laughs> There's got to be a vampire cocktail somewhere out there, right? Taint blood. Um, tainted blood. There you go. And then this this is for Nat. This stuff is uh, really good. Um, one ounce of this. Troy, explain for Nat. I was really hoping that wouldn't happen. <laughs> mm. you don't yeah. do it. It's okay if you don't want to. Ah, it's like a, it's all of Matt's favorite things. Really? It's mint. Um, it's bitter. It's chocolate. Well, I like one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, it's got a eucalyptus uh, dominance to it for sure. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I, I hope the drink doesn't suck. We want to make it forever. It's probably going to blow. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's going to suck. All right, so I'm going to stir over large cubes. Dude, this is also easy to do, too. You can literally, like, make 45 fucking large cubes in two days if you have three or four trays. Like, you can make so many of them. So, what? Oh, the bag? It's hard to hear you when you print on it. I'm bad! <laughs> um, but I just, like, yeah, I switch them every couple days and make them. The purpose here is to make this drink cold quick and not over dilute it. I feel like I have more control with this. Wouldn't you agree? With a larger cube? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to start a little bit longer than what Matt did. Um, oh, yeah. It smells good. Yeah, it smells interesting. Hmm. <laughs> it was good and then it was interesting. I'm a little scared. <laughs> it's got a really nice color to it. It does. It looks like a blood orange. Like, I mean, it just looks like blood orange juice. Yeah. Um, I'm really kind of just... It's probably like a minute, minute sir. Compared to like fridge ice, um, you know, when we had Raj on here, I know we've talked about this a bunch, but when we had Raj on here, he kind of schooled us on ice. He put barely any ice in there. He stirred it, and it's not. He said it's not really about surface area; it's about dilution and temperature, right? So this, I know this isn't diluting as much. It probably is now. 
I just kind of just wait for the, the glass to condensate and then I'll kind of, you know, figure it's done. But maybe I should do the old body real quick and oh. I'm just give it a little. Oh. Oh. It's a fancy ass bitch. Um, this is where that double strain comes in. There, I mean, you can clearly see pulp and shit in here, so I'll just get it out. Um, oh, it looks beautiful. What do you think? What do you think this is going to taste like? When I told Troy about this, he's like, that's probably the strangest drink I've ever heard. But, uh, it's going to taste I don't know about that. bitter and maybe a little bit, not sour, but maybe a little bit of tartness. And uh, I don't know. I don't think I've ever had Fernet before, so I feel like I'm in for a treat. Looks like so, you, got, you got three pretty equal cocktails there. We're about to be. Yeah. Um, what, what are we doing for garnish? Uh, orange peel. Orange peel? Yep. Fat boy, right in the glass. Spritzed and rimmed? or just... Yes. Uh, <laughs> Spritzed and rimmed. <laughs> oh, yeah, Spritzed and rimmed. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in the industry. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. <laughs> Expressed... And Sprit- dipped. Spritz and rimmed, baby. <laughs> yeah, then, I should probably, next time I make this blood orange reduction, you live and you learn. Strain it before I put it into the its resting place. You know? Ooh, yeah, that is just like thick viscous stuff. Looks good, though. Smells good. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of that off in there. Sick. Looks like Manischewitz. Yeah. Mal- lava, Nagi, Lava. I can say that. Great singer. Uh, that was my not singing voice. This is my radio voice. This is... I can't do a radio Can you do a good radio voice? Welcome to WBO Troy. Tune in. I'll never tell. Mm. I don't have the right mic for it. I need a different mic. Really? That's that's the reason, you know. Any more proximity effect. You just need to turn your mic up and realize actually how much you have. But you, you don't because... You know, little baby ears. Oh, little baby ears. He's got baby ears. Tune in next time for baby <laughs> ears. Coming at you, WBO Troy. So, I, I, Can you I, even I, hear? It's kind of like a beautiful little offset of colors here. I do I do like the uh, <laughs> presentation, I will say. Didn't acknowledge our radio voices. <laughs> All right, Matt, this one's for you. Yo, let me say something. Say this, it. This is a gorgeous cocktail. It looks great, doesn't it? Gorge. Gorge. Looks engorged. All right. Um, I brought the brought the rice syrup over here, too. You should try that. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, drink the cocktail first. All right. Oh. Cheers. 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 To an elevated version of Matt's garbage. To a slightly better version of my amazing drink. <laughs> I mean, we'll find out. <sighs> yeah. Troy's going to like it. Meh. What? <laughs> what do you mean, meh? It's juicy. It's sweet. It's minty. It tastes like NyQuil. A little bit. I love that. I, like, this is, <laughs> I was going to say, this is like Troy's cocktail. No, I, yeah. Okay. You, you you go first because it's your cocktail. I want to hear. I think it's just a little, little, little viscous much. Uh, from the blood orange reduction, I think. I mean, this syrup is kind of visky, too. Is there? Sh- you said there's no su- sugar in it. The sugar in here. There's no sugar in the orange. No, just reduced. Which always and you didn't. But you, but you said you didn't taste it after it was reduced. No, I tasted it. Oh, yeah. And did it taste sweet or did it? Yeah. Just- yeah, just like I mean, it still tasted like blood orange. But-, but did it taste like there was sugar? Yeah, kind of. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is good. I don't really know if I like the texture of it, though. I love the See, texture. I of really it. like the texture of it. I don't. The only thing, the only thing I don't like, is the mintiness, the freshness. If I replace the like for me, if I replace the fret with almost anything else, I would be all about this. Cocktail. I'm sure there's probably another Amaro we can yeah. we could use. Like I would be all about but this. The fret. I try, try the it. second sip. I no, no, no. Hear me out. I do like it. I don't love it. Oh, interesting. But it's not because of the fernet, and it's not because of the viscosity. I just think it's too sweet. Hmm. 
Matt, try mine to yours and see if that Regal Sir thing did anything. Well, yeah, mine is different than you guys, I guess. That's true. Bite an orange peel. It's different. It's different. I think it's better. It's way better. Who's Matt's? Matt's. It's incredibly better. I, I'm trying to tell you, that was better. Yeah, maybe I just got the bad one. I think you I actually I think like you're Regal. I know you Regal Stir, baby. That's I'm a king. I got a Regal Stir. Regal Stir is a little tip you can keep in your back little fucking pants hole. You let's know? see if let's see if the psalm can detect the difference. Hmm. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. Oh, what happened to your coaster? It's more of I, I I more smell the difference, but I also do taste a little bit of a difference too. It's very subtle. I just think it's a bit more. There's a there's a freshness there mm. that the that the others don't have. It's also been sitting in the glass just a tad bit longer. True. Yeah, which probably helps its cause. I also made both of ours together. Yeah. Thank you for making me the best cocktail, Anthony. I'm glad you like it. Really appreciate it. I cater to my sensitive guests. <laughs> All right, let's talk. This yeah. is, talk. This is a bit perplexing to me because I, I, I have a feeling that this cocktail could be utterly amazing, and I don't, I don't think you were far off. I just think yeah, it's, I just followed a recipe exactly. Yeah. yeah, but either, I mean, if we want to stick to equal parts in this cocktail I think one of two things has to happen there's either got to be less sugar in the syrup and the rye whiskey syrup we'll try the rye whiskey syrup yeah let's do that or less reduction time in the blood orange that's what I'm thinking too that's that's what I was going to say I think I think it was reduced probably a couple minutes too long because it is a thick boy my house smelled so good when I was making this yeah I mean that's 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 pretty absurd. Um, yeah, I probably should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> liquor's for drinking, not for licking off your hand. Um, Ooh, mm-hmm. pretty good. Yeah, it's got a bite for sure. It's very sweet though. Hmm. Hmm. What what right? I use a uh, rabbit hole, right? I kind of wonder how it would be shaken. Yeah, I use the rabbit hole. I wonder, but. I don't think, I don't think, I think it'd be a different cocktail at that point. Yeah. It's elevated. It is definitely elevated. Yeah. This may be a cocktail doctor episode. I'm I'm thinking it might. Honestly. Be. Yeah, it really might have to be. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm so intrigued. I, I, I mean, I don't know enough to, to know what I would change, but I do know that I really like it, but I want to love it. I'm leaning... This is tough, man, because uh, I don't. All right, so I don't. In, in terms of arguing that you could change the ratios, just for the sake of arguing, I don't want more Fernet in here. Me neither. <laughs> yeah, and I like Fernet. <laughs> I love Fernet, and I don't want it to be any sweeter. But the other two ingredients, both, I mean. I'm taking your word on the blood orange here, have sweetness, but I would think, I would think if anything, we've got to up the ante on the blood orange and lower the rye syrup, but then you lose the bite. You you, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I picture this being more bitter and more balanced. Um, bitter from uh, from Fernet, yeah. It's called. I mean, it's called the bitter handshake. Yeah, yeah, that was a dumb question. So it just means to me, it's like means one of two things. It's it's a bitter cocktail. I mean, amaro like amaro is literally the Italian word for bitter. Yeah, right. So like, it's a bitter cocktail, but it's agreeing with the other ingredients in there, and it's balanced. Or it's like, it's like fuck you, I'm bitter. Or it's like you yeah. walk into a bar and like I want a bitter handshake. Like I don't need blood oranges. What are you doing, asshole? Yeah. <laughs> but if you if you don't reduce the blood orange as much, then you don't get the texture. Right. Which is what I like about it. Me too. I'm I'm really I'm at a loss. Well, Anthony, you might want to log on to uh, stinkerdrinkthinker.com, go to Cocktail Doctors, and submit this cocktail. I know somebody who could doctor this. You know what I you know need? Just a splash of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I got some whiskey for you. Want to give it a try? Yeah, give me that. <laughs> whiskey float? <laughs> Everything's better with a whiskey float. All right. I don't know. Let's, go, let's see. Matt, while I'm doing that, give me your ranking. 
Uh, I am going to go dr- uh, Thinker Stinker because I don't love the mintiness. Damn. Your drink was a fucking nasty ass stinker too then. Fuck you. I'm just show, I'm just I literally okay. found this on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Me yeah, too. Yeah. Goddamn internet. I actually really like this uh, one. I re- no, the thing is I really like I really like the texture. I really I honestly do enjoy it. I'm actually going to probably finish this. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's it. The whiskey that float. did the trick. All right. Uh but yeah, I really like the cocktail. Um, well, I just want to change one thing and maybe apparently it's a whiskey float. Put the rest of that on top of your drink and okay. just give it a little toss. I don't know how to toss cocktail. Do this. They toss cocktail. Look like you're teaching at a preschool doing that. Mr. Son. Son. Mr. Golden Son. That makes it much more manageable to me. Hmm. All right. right. Just because I feel like I failed, I need to call out that guy in order to find his fucking name. No, let's do it off there. No. Uh Uh-uh. No. All right, Google it. Since Matt thinks that I'm too mean, Google it. Google it. Yeah, one guy. Forget it. We'll post it in the comments. Yeah. So his his uh, whiskey, his rye whiskey syrup was equal parts sugar water mm-hmm. or sugar yep. whiskey. My bad. Yep. Um, and did he specify as to an amount of time to reduce the blood orange? Yeah, he posted and, and a, a posted a recipe in there. And you and you, did I fo- that. I followed it exactly okay. how he did it. Yeah. He was just missing the whiskey float. He was so close. Yeah. I mean. It's a drinker stinker. Sorry, Andrew, but the whole point was to show different things you can do at home that are fancy as fuck to make your guests impressed. But they got you got to taste test them first. That's <laughs> I think that's I think that's I mean I think you elevated every aspect of it. Yeah, it was an equal parts whiskey cocktail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I, I in no way do I think it's a stinker. I actually I would even before I added the whiskey I would I would still call it a thinker drinker. So. I just don't like the Fernet. That's all. That's the only reason. It has nothing to do with the cocktail itself at all. So I hated it. <laughs> all right. Well, Troy. I know, right? Which clearly. is pretty frustrating because each component of it is, is you know. Pretty solid. Yeah. Well, Troy. Um, yeah, you got to make us a sour. Yeah, a whiskey sour. You going to just make a better whiskey sour? Is that what we're going to do? You got coops in there? Yeah. Okay. I, I'd prefer it. Well, me personally, I'd prefer it. <laughs> Let's talk about that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've got very two very different schools of thought when it comes to making whiskey sours. Um, the one that that you made for us, Matt, is yes. is kind of my my bare bones entry level, more approachable, more relatable to you know the masses. And just just a recap: so I used two ounces of Buffalo Trace, or yeah, or whatever bourbon. Yeah. Three quarter ounce lemon, three quarter ounce simple. Yep. Yeah. No, no egg white. Yep. Um, fresh ice. I, I, I don't even use large cubes if, if I'm if I'm doing it. Um, you know, for for the audience at at my bar. Um, you do it up. It's high volume. No, I, over over regular ice. Regular ice. Oh, yeah. you just like really? Yeah, regular ice. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And it's funny. I'll be honest with you guys. I've gotten a lot of compliments on this whiskey sour. Really? Yeah. Huh. What whiskey do you use at the bar? Whatever people want. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I've made it with, with our own whiskey. The be- honestly, one of the best ones that I've made, believe it or not, was with Suntory Toki whiskey. I don't doubt that at all. Yeah. Oh, I, I made you one of those. Yeah. Yeah. And also, we had, I had, I mean, an old fashioned, and the, essentially like a Japanese version of the old fashioned at the local at Nawa. And they make, they're old fashioned with, with Toki. Toki fucking. And it's just like, it's man. really good. It just, it, yeah. does, it works so well. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. But is it uncommon to do a half hour, uh, half hour, half ounce of simple and three quarter ounce of lime and then two ounces of whiskey? Lime or lemon? L- l- sorry, lemon. I just no. slug that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, and and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be uh, brutally honest here. Fuck it, why not? Um, so at my bar, we are not fresh squeezing citrus by hand. We are buying fresh squeezed citrus, and I know for, I know from personal experience that we're buying the probably the best brand that you could get because I actually I work I worked with it before, and it's it's fresh so much so that like it expires. The expiration dates on these on these fresh you know fresh citrus juices are like usually a week out after you buy them. Like that's as you know as best as you can do right after you buy them. So. 
but I have noticed, and you know, another thing is is oxidation um, is real when it comes to citrus. It's fucking rapid. And one of the things that I think that you know people have to be aware of is, especially if you put your your citrus into squeeze bottles at home, um, you've got to cover them because the little the little holes in the in the you know in the pore spouts or whatever mm. the plastic those plastic white pore spouts um you know there's there's air that seeps into them and that'll cut your 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 lifespan really quickly hmm. um and i'm not saying that I, i'm saying you know realistically speaking in a high volume establishment i'm pouring cocktails that contain citrus that is not as fresh as it could be. Right. I wish I wish it could be fresher or or perfectly fresh every single time I make a drink for somebody. But it's where, kind of impossible. Where, where I work, well, yeah. it's kind of impossible. Have half the clientele and charge twice as much. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And I bring all of this up to say specifically about your your point about the ratios with the whiskey sour. Um I've noticed that there, a little, a, a little bit goes a longer way with 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 citrus, and I've noticed what I would typically think, you know, where, where a half ounce would be, you know, the perfect balance, or a three quarters of an ounce would be a perfect balance. Sometimes I have to cut that um, by a quarter ounce, or or supplement it with a little bit more simple syrup than I ordinarily would if it were truly like fresh squeezed. squeezed. So you're saying three quarter, three quarter, and less fresh squeezed, three quarter or half would be okay. Is that what I'm gauging? Like you can lower the simple because the fruit is fresher. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, well, yes. the lemon juice you're gonna use tonight, I, I squeezed literally an hour before you guys came. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I always squeeze it fresh when I put it right in the drink, or if I'm gonna be making a lot of like summertime cold rushes and shit, I'll fucking squeeze it and put it in a container. And, yeah. Like the hour before people come. Like my my you know perfect daiquiri recipe is gonna be two ounces rum three quarters of an ounce lime juice and half an ounce simple syrup. If I made that with le- limes, I just squeezed myself versus me making it with, you know, bottled fresh squeezed citrus that is as fresh as it's going to be in a bottle. Th- the latter is going to be more tart mm-hmm. in my experience. So I have to, I have to take the amount of tasting that I do for every single drink that not only I make, but my bar makes is insane because I am a fucking freak <laughs> when it comes to making sure my drinks are balanced before they go out there. Interesting. Yeah. Do you walk, walk around and test your bartender's drinks too? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Like while they're making them? You see Absol- the straw in them? Generally after they're made. Yeah. And if, and if they're not like, you know, in balance, most of the time they are, but if they're not in balance, then... Yeah, I mean, they, and and they know they like yeah. they're not surprised. Nazi by, Troy's coming over yeah. here. Comes Hitler, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I got yeah. to dump my drink. You're like the fucking Gordon Ramsay of the fucking Connor's rooftop. And it's the same. It's the what same. What is of, this rubbish? <laughs> Sorry. It's the same sort of concept. If I'm if I'm you know batching a couple of cocktails or just combining by batching, I'm just combining some spirits and maybe a syrup into a bottle, and I'm really concerned about shelf life all the time, and I, everything's dated. But I want to know how how much time I've got, so I'll taste every cocktail that, like, you know, from one day to the next to the next because it's not going to be the same as it was. And if I feel like I'm cutting it close, and my you know sometimes my bartenders would be like, my newer ones especially, they think that I'm more so judging them based on their performance of of making the cocktail has nothing to do with them. It's just me looking out for the quality of what's in the glass. Yeah. So you're too good for that place. <laughs> they don't deserve you, Troy. <laughs> but I am thirsty, though. Yeah, yeah fair um, enough. Coop glasses, you're gonna do? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. Um, you, I gotta get you three eggs. You do. Say a couple right back. Okay. Cocktail break. Hey, Troy. Welcome back from cocktail break. It's cocktail break. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see you behind the bar. Uh, it, it seems so natural, isn't it? Yeah. Huh. When's, the, when's the last time you've been behind a bar? Valentine's Day, I believe. He works at a bar. Oh, I know, but it's, no. yeah, that bar, stinker bar. 
Yeah, sneak a bar. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna make for us, Troy? I'm going to make an improve upon. Impossible. Improved <laughs> with a D. You know what pisses me off? I looked up. Please. Mo- yeah. <laughs> I looked up like most like autocorrected words out there, and the word literally is not on there, and I can't spell literally to save my life. I was wondering about that. Yeah. How do you usually spell it? With two T's. It's not, but now two I know T's. now I know it's litter alley. That's how you spell it. Litter alley. No, it's leader alley. Yeah, it's leader alley. Make your fucking drink, <laughs> asshole. Because <laughs> litter has two T's. I fucking kill everyone. I hate you guys. Ah, Troy, how are you going to... Screw you guys. I'm going home. I'm going home. How are you going to make How are you gonna make my perfect uh, whiskey sour better? Well, like whiskey I said... whiskey sour was too sweet. <laughs> well, I know that. I don't think it was. I do. I do. <laughs> really? I think it was a little sweet, but that's just me. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it the same. Okay. Same exact way. All right, ready? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. No, no, no. So like I said, two schools of thought for me making whiskey sours. The first is, you know, the more accessible way. The second is the elevated, refined way where, you know, when I either work in an establishment or am in the confines of a beautiful bar like the Stinker Drinker Thinker Bar establishment uh, that has fresh farm eggs, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one of those egg whites in there, you know. So you don't put the whole egg in, huh? I do not put the whole egg in. I was jo- I was joking. I but like more or less want you to educate the people. Yeah, who've never made an, uh, an egg. Yeah, drink. some people get a little skeeved out by the idea of of raw egg in their in their beverage, or even the idea of of such a crazy thing. But it's uh, you know, in terms of safety and bacteria and all of that, I think it's a bit of a while still that it's that it's going to be. Harmful, especially you know where I like I know where these eggs are coming from. So if you can find eggs like that, your local eggs, your 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 friends, your your chicken farmers, what have you, um, then then I think you're going to be in good shape. But it's to enhance the the texture and and the viscosity of the cocktail in a way that uh, really is 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 beautiful. Have you guys uh, have you ever messed with aquafaba? I have not. No, I have not, and I would love to. Yeah, yeah, um, because you know, I've I've also I've got friends who are vegan who wouldn't wouldn't drink my whiskey sour uh, if it had an egg white in it, and that would be a, a, a really good alternative. Yeah. So is I've, it chickpeas? It's chickpea. It's okay. like it's like you take chickpeas and you put like what is it warm water on them or something, or you boil them and it's like the water from that and it, 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 it emulates. It gives like a foamy characteristic when shaken in drinks. Hmm. Um. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I'm uh I'm a little thirsty. Oh, all right. Hurry up. Came to the right uh, spot. I think I'm going to admire <laughs> your do. whiskey collection. Oh, for a you said that we can order with any whiskey we want, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot of Craig over there. Yeah. Um, Matt, what kind of whiskey would you want in your whiskey sour? I mean, I'm all about convenience, so that's fine. Or, I mean, Buffalo Trace, also a good option. But if you had a lot of Craig in your hand, I can't say no to that. How about Barrel Gray Label Bourbon? How about uh, Happy? Rabbit Hole... Anything. Yeah, go home and get it. That's Happy, fucking funny. You made me use my Elmer T. Lee with Sprite. And you have a full fucking bottle of Elmer T. Lee. Were you that, about to say Elmer Fudd? That fucking <laughs> Elmer fucking Fudd. That infuriates me. Why? Because you have a full fucking bottle. You told me you're going to use yours. All right, offline. <laughs> offline. Um, use Kentucky Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, I got an open bottle right here. It's not there. It's over here. Use, but um, yeah, here hold on. Over y- where? Yeah, right here. Throw oh. it at him, Matt. Throw it. Oh, thanks, Mr. Body. I guess you're the easiest. We'll get this on air, the swap on air. This is exciting. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can, yeah. A little 101 proof, huh? Yeah. You know what? Actually, I changed my mind. I don't want Elijah Craig. I want wild. I'll give me the turkey. Gobble, gobble. You want turkey as well? Okay. I want wild turkey. What do you think, uh-huh. Troy? Is that okay with you? I think it is. We're going to make okay. three wild turkey. Yeah, just take the pour spout off there. Put it on the Kentucky Spirit. Bring the Kentucky Spirit over to the table, too. My ear hurts a little bit. I want to sleep good. You know, <laughs> bringing the Kentucky spirit over to the table when, afterwards. Yeah, yeah, with the oh. sours. So I, I actually, the last time I, um, we've made New York sours on here at one point, I think, right? Mm-hmm. That's basically a whiskey sour with a wine float. Yeah. Um, I actually did it with Starlino Vermouth one time. Mm. It was fucking incredible. I'd be into that. Yeah, and I did it with Demerara syrup instead of simple syrup. What kind of wine do you use for wine float? Does it matter? Like, is it like Merlot or? Yeah, typically it's something like Merlot. 
for a sour, a New York sour, isn't it? I mean, it's really whatever is convenient for you. I I think my go-to for whatever reason is Pinot Noir. I think I just like the color of it. And I also don't want oak, personally. Not too much oak. Not that Pinot Noir doesn't have oak, but, like, I don't want too much density or body or oak. And I think Pinot sort of uh, bridges that gap for me. What do you think it is that he doesn't want? <laughs> he wants everything. You know what I want? A cocktail. Yeah, probably not oak, though, right? All right, what are your proportions? <laughs> My proportions, two ounces of whiskey. <laughs> I love that noise, yeah. Look at this. <laughs> Elevating your home cocktail. Well, well, I mean, I mean hey, it's a good thing it was right next to it. You know? yeah, there you go. You're making two at once here, or what? Um, I'm gonna make. Should I make two at once first, or should I make one and then two at once? Make one and then two at once. How would you make it at your bar, Mister? I would. I, well, that's a great question. You'd have two shakers. I would have two shakers. I would put double in this one and then single in this one, and I would wait to add ice both at the same time, shake them both up, have three glasses ready, strain. Bada bing, bada boom. Hey. But forget in this case, it. we'll just... Uh, forget about it. You like the fucking sours? Forget about it. You have so the wine sour. floating? Only in New Excuse York. Me. Sorry. <laughs> whiskey sour. Whiskey? Sour? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Fresh squeezed lemon. Three quarter? Three what? quarter. My pain's taking me. Hand squeeze that. Hand. And then Sugar. Sugar. Sugar water. I'm going to do. Here's a tip for elevating your home bar, guys. Don't buy store-bought simple syrup. It's true. No. Yeah. It's got chemicals in it. Yeah. It's literally super easy to make. It's equal parts sugar and water. <clears throat> One cup each makes a cup and a half of syrup. I did a hair less than three quarter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're, we're going to take one of our eggs. Um, and we're just going to. We're just gonna we're gonna extract the white and omit the yolk. Is there any tips or tricks to getting the egg white uh, by itself, or yeah, do, do your best to crack it as perfectly in half as you can. And for me, boop, oh. don't break any shell in there. Nice little. That's what Matt looked like effect. before his vasectomy. And then dunk the yolk back into the other half while letting some of the white drip out as such. And I think I pretty much got most of it. Um, sometimes you, you can, can run into trouble because I've I'm basically got to run a yolk. So I'm just going to. And then you put discard. those you put the yolks in the pan. You cook them up for your dogs. Uh, I just make a. Uh, a no egg white omelet. Oh yeah, I mean that's. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I usually just pickle for my dogs, but you know. As if you are, well, forget. I can't. I blow All right, accent. so we are going to do two shakes. I'm going to dry shake first, as in shake with no ice, uh, as to emulsify the egg white with uh, the ing the other ingredients in here, and that's going to get this really frothy consistency uh, that. Your whiskey sour didn't have. Wow. It didn't. There was no head on that drink at all. So this is called a dry shake. Um, would you dry shake without an egg white, too, for this drink, or to get it frothy? Or No. Yeah. Just a single. Oh, leaking. Don't worry, guys. Don't try this at home. This is a professional here. My whiskey sour didn't leak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it did, but uh, I won't say it did. And then we add ice. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Shh. Wherever you are. Alrighty. I've got a a nice chilled coupe glass, and I'll show you why I'm going to use a coupe glass and serve this uh, up with no ice as opposed to with ice like I would in other circumstances. Shaking's doing something for me. Sure it wasn't the, the egg white dripping in there? Egg white was oddly sexual. 
<laughs> I don't think there's anything odd about it, honestly. I think it's just it is what it is. Yeah. We're going to double strain. A little cone strainer here underneath. Look at that, baby. It's frothy. Sure is. Do a little love tap. Oh, almost. Almost there. Not yet. We want to remove some of the ice shards and any potential citrus pulp. And then, I don't know how I'm going to do this last part. We're going to take some Angostura bitters. And I think the bitter component, to offset the tartness from the, the citrus and the sweetness from the sugar, is what really makes this a, a, a perfectly balanced cocktail. And we're just going to have a little bit of fun with this part. We're going to do a couple droplets. Boop. 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 Oh, I missed. I was trying to make a line. Fucked it up. Do you go bloop at your customers? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Bloop. Just the of the bars. And bloop. since I don't have a toothpick or a, or a straw or... Like that, I'm just gonna use this knife. And we're gonna make a little. It's a draw full of straws. So it looks like an arrow yeah, or some spades. So that that's how you do that, huh? Spades and a line. There is a there's a whole bunch of straws in the drawers, by the way. I like the knife; makes them look more badass. Straws in the drawers. Eh, whatever. Yeah. All right. All right. Here's only the first two, one. Only two more. <laughs> Welcome back, Troy Sticky Hands Viglotti. You got some sticky hands. And we got three drinks. I'm going to like a latte. Yes. Feeling that... What is this like? Three and a half ounces. I'm, I just have a feeling that I'm going to destroy it. Yeah, it looks really good. I will say, presentation-wise, yours and Anthony's cocktails uh, are absolutely, without a doubt, more elevated than mine. Although the cherry on the ice cube, I must say, yeah. proud moment. Yeah, but... I was proud... <laughs> Yeah, but this looks way nicer. But then I a took a shit on it. Yeah. yeah, you took and a shit on what? On on his drink and with this and. Well, uh, we'll tell you. I'll tell you after I try it. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Salute. Cheers, gents. Oh, it's no? very full. I would have uh, spilled yeah, this on the bar. <laughs> Eleven dollars for a drink. I spill half. These are single coops. Mm. Tastes like salmonella. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the egg, you know. Uh, it's man, the textures. I just every time I love it. I'll tell you that wild turkey, the in turk. A cocktail, I didn't think about that. It's exactly yeah. what it is. It's fucking fantastic, dude. <laughs> I could live on an island with peanut butter, chocolate, <laughs> and wild turkey, and my wife and kid. Fuck you guys. All right, we can remote pocket. We can remote you in. So no, there's no internet there. Ah, uh, only golf course. Oh my golf course. Made of chocolate and peanut butter. It's like candy. Like. And wild turkey. Um man. It it is it kinda tastes like you're eating a tr- like a high end truffle. Like a creamy dark truffle. Not te- not not uh texturally, not not flavor wise, but mm, like ganache, like that like viscousy, like mm, yeah. Mm. Woo! Doesn't suck. <laughs> that is fucking delicious, dude. Drinker. Enough said. Good night. <laughs> All right, Troy. Um. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. So on there next week's. Uh, good job, Troy. You want to make me another one? Uh, if it didn't take you twenty-two minutes, you know. <laughs> um. Do you have anything uh, otherwise, technique-wise, or things you implemented you feel like really brought? It out in this particular cocktail, yeah. So it's 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 you know it's tough. I'm conflicted because you know, like I was saying about how I make you know the other the other sour that I make for for people at my bar. Um, it's just different. And it's it's based on how, what you have. It's based on how much time you have. 
this is, I, I mean, I'm going to put my blood, sweat, and tears into this. My, my you know, 100% of my love, 100% of my time into a cocktail like this. I'm thinking about the presentation. Um, you know, more than more than I'm thinking about the presentation on every other cocktail. And the other thing, like if it if it were me, my perfect whiskey sour actually has a large cube. Interesting, for, for really? me personally, yeah. Oh. It look it looks just like this, but it's got a large cube. Hmm. But that's just the way that I prefer it. But I think this aesthetically looks better. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. In a coupe class. Yep. The bitter art, like if you're really trying to impress somebody, do a little bit of that, get it down. And also in terms of, of flavor profile and balance, the Angostura bitters adds another, yeah, another layer. And the way you designed it too, with just a line across, you can take it a sip without and a sip with it. Yes. And it, it is a different cocktail. Uh, and that's, sure. and that's the, I think that's the point of doing that instead of putting it in the glass. What was that drink we made on here where we um, where we atomized Angostura? And burnt it? It burnt it, like, through a flame, man. Do you remember that? Was that was it? the Star Wars cocktail, wasn't it? Was it? I think so. I'm blanking. Yeah. I think it was the, I think it was the, uh, the Star Wars. It was a Holly Kalani. Yeah, that was another Star Wars oh. episode. Oh, was it? It was a cocktail doctor for my brother. For my brother. Oh, yeah. 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 okay. Mm-hmm. Moon of Endor. Yep. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Tiki. Yeah. Yeah. Tiki. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. That was a good one. I was kind of wonder if you could do that with this too, but like, I, I like the idea of being able to drink through it sometimes and not be able to drink through it. Yeah. yeah. Um. The large cube one just reminds me of like, almost. Sa- I I personally think of this as more of a traditional sour. Maybe traditional is not the word. Maybe yeah. Like, I think I would like expect upscale this. sour, right? It's funny, man. If you Google whiskey sour, like and and like search images, you will not see anything that looks like this. You'll see American Legion sour yeah. mix, and you'll see bright and you'll young see, green. You'll see the red, the bright red maraschino cherry that's yeah. got the slice of orange, the chunk folded uh, around it, staff yeah. or whatever. Yeah, or with the, a toothpick yeah. in the middle. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. And maybe like an umbrella. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, this is better than that. So. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. Such a riffable cocktail, too, man. Yeah. Um, like, that's the thing when people order whiskey sour is I want I don't want to make a drink that reminds them of something that's just not, you know, like not reminiscent of a whiskey sour. Right. And I know that this is as, you know, as clean and refined of a whiskey sour as as not as like anybody can make, but, no, as, but I, I, as I can yeah. make, as I can make. Yeah, that's that's a but, gr- great thing about cocktails for people who don't know. And there's a good book you can reference that's made by the Death and Go guys called Cocktail Codex that kind of shows how to build a drink and how you can riff on just like the actual build of classic cocktails. That's what all modern cocktails are just riffs of using basic proportions, like a Gold Rush, which is one of the most common drinks out there. Like is is a whiskey sour with honey syrup, right? Like, dude, and yeah. then an old, a, a, I mean, a daiquiri, a daiquiri, Manhattan's, is this with rum? Yep, like a gimlet. Is this with gin? Exactly right. So like, it's all you know, fucking margarita but, almost. But it's all, my point is, it's all the same proportions. There's a there's a formula you follow, and then you can like take those ingredients and switch it out. You can switch it out for different sugars. You can switch switch it out for different citruses and different base syrups, or not syrups, base spirits. Yeah. Same thing with old fashions in Manhattans. Um, you know, equal parts cocktails. I mean, you can just take those 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 types of ideas and just make your own riffs on them. I, and that's, I mean, cocktails are a lot easier than people think, which is, um, uh, yeah, I wanted to show that we can elevate these things pretty easily, but also it's just like, if you have a formula in mind, be creative. Try things like you can you can absolutely do that. But um, thank you, Troy. Thank you. This is a drinker. Yeah, it's calm. I was I was happy that I kind of like reached out and did something weird. Yeah, that I was, agree. That was yeah. somewhat fancy, but a classic co- cocktail like this, boozed out or not, is always going to kind of hit as long as you use good ingredients. I, I feel like not yeah. like fucking sour mix and yeah, you know. Um, anyway. But yeah, I mean, you know, technique with the dry shake first or Huge. Or, or second. I mean, the the reverse dry shake. Is, What's the difference is there? Do you know? We Raj and I and us sort of touched upon it, and I think it's it's really just user preference, um, because the the end result seems to be, you know, a, a properly emulsified egg within you know the mixture of all the other ingredients. I don't think. 
I don't know. I, I I don't I don't believe that one like you can distinguish the difference based on taste. Like if you're blind tasting a whiskey sour, like oh this was definitely reverse shake. Like I, I reverse dry <laughs> shake. Like I that's the blind I, we need I, to I do. Mean, yeah, and, and maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I definitely yeah, couldn't yeah. fucking do it. Sure. Yeah. Um, drinkers all around. I think. Right. I'm a yeah. drinker. Yeah. Not much else there to discuss. Um, if you're like me. And you like the body, and you always have a ton of people at your house, and you always get ton, or I'm oh, sorry, you always get stuck making a ton of drinks for people instead of actually mingling and hanging out. Um, the idea of batch cocktails is maybe something you should put on your radar. Uh, on Friday, we have a special episode coming out about batching cocktails at home, which is something that you know whether or not you know you've had one or not. I mean, if you've gone to a, a local restaurant and had an old fa- fashioned or some sort of um, Popular cocktail, chances are it's batched, and I didn't really realize that until recently. And I don't know if it's if it's a you know an older than a recent thing in the industry, but um, we gave it a shot. And we compared fresh cocktails to batch cocktails, and um, we talked about why or why not. And um, yeah, it was a fun time. So um, stay tuned for that on Friday. Um, in the meantime, while you're here, drop a little thumbs up button down there. You press it. If you press the thumbs down button, I guess that's fine. But explain why in the comments, and then I'll go <laughs> at you. Um, just like, because I'm mean. Um, but <laughs> then then go to your right, this way. If you're, well, if you're looking this way, it's that way. And then you hit the <laughs> subscribe button, and that will get... And then there's a little button after that that has this bell. Hit that bell, too. That'll notify you every time we release shitty videos like this. If you're listening to us... We love you. We love all of our original listeners, and we're happy you're still hanging around. You think Russia guy's still here? I just, I have to ask. Oh, I can find out. Yeah, I can we check. check. Um, you know what? Maybe next week we'll do a, a, a shout a, out. A, yeah, a, yeah, a worldwide yeah. shout out. Yeah, in at least fifty episodes. I haven't thanked the millions. A lot of a lot of people. The millions. And millions. You're both supposed to do it at the same time. And millions for listening to the rock show here and um, joining me on the rock show. Oh my. This same rock tune network. I've been rock watching a place. lot of Attitude Era, and I honestly, I I think that this podcast is the reason why. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't I don't know why we cannot go through an episode without talking about WWF or WWE. I don't anything. know why. There was a there's a quick story, and then we'll get out of here. But like, there was a <laughs> WrestleMania 15 was the Rock for Stone Cold Steve Austin, and like uh, Mankind was supposed to be the the guest special referee, and. Uh, the big show, like, sent him to the hospital early in the night at WrestleMania. So Vince came out and was going to be the referee. But Shawn Michaels, who was the commissioner, came out and said, no, fuck you, Vince. Like, the only person who can appoint a special guest referee is me. Get the fuck out. And then just, like, the the normal ref was there. The, the match went through four referees because The Rock kept hitting them all in the head with steel chairs. And But, like, anyway, before the match, Jim Ross came down. The only match he called that night at WrestleMania was Michael Coleman and Jerry the King. Uh, and Michael Cole. Michael Cole. Jerry, um, if you're listening, <laughs> um, get well soon. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry just had a... Listening. Jerry the King Lawler just had a massive stroke, everybody, last oh, week. Fuck. So, Dang. yeah, right. just uh, prayers are with you, bud. Cheers to you. You shouldn't be doing what we're doing, but heal up. Um, anyway, so Jim Ross came out, and and Jerry's like, it's JR! Right? And then he sat down, and then Jerry was, or, uh, Jerry was like, Jr., you're here. He's like Stone Cold versus The Rock, Jerry. And then like the glass broke, and Stone Cold came out, and it was fucking sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. And I don't, I don't know about you, but Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock's entrance, uh, entrance, dude. There's nothing like the Texas rattlesnake walking down the fucking just, thing, just in his leather yeah. vest, oh, just yeah. fucking shit talking everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And he just looks like calm, and then he gets up on the ropes and just like fucking throws his hands up, and everyone's like, yeah. And if you look, the whole crowd's doing it with him. Uh, My favorite ones were like which he he's, he's catches the beer. To yeah. Mid- Somehow he does it every time. Yeah. At I don't the know. at the end of that match, Earl Hefner was the fourth referee, and he somehow got there, and he was drinking beer with Stone Cold Steve Austin, getting up on the ropes because Stone Cold the son Vince. Stone Cold, if you're watching this, yeah, we'll, Steve, come on the podcast. Uh, we'll drink Coors Lights with you. We'll drink Steve Weiser's yeah. with you, dude. Yeah. yeah anyway, um, on that note, you know, thanks again, everybody. <laughs> Group yodel. Group yodel. Stagger, oh, staggered? Oh, let me start. No, just all one. Oh, you want to start? All right. Three, two, one. Yodel, hey, hoo. Yodel.